Hello, Adam at Flash Building here with another Flash CS3 professional tutorial, and I'm working in ActionScript 3. So that means you can be working in ActionScript 3 in Flash CS4 and use these same methods and everything. Okay, so this lesson shows a nifty custom method for going to next and previous frame labels. I don't know if you know what frame labels are. Let me show you. Just the little flags we can make our file snap to certain sections or play certain sections that we want to by giving them frame labels that's what a frame label is so this lesson shows a nifty method for going to next and previous frame labels automatically uh... it's more advanced than simply going from frame to frame in succession which we all know how to do using these methods here but these methods won't suffice if our movie clips timeline has uh... the frame labels spaced apart differently okay so what I did was I used buttons to show you the programming but yours doesn't have to be button initiated you maybe you need to do it during some certain time or some certain function if you have a timer event or maybe you have an on enter frame event that you make this code fire off on you can do it through there it doesn't have to be button initiated that's my whole point there so what we have are a previous button and a next button and a pages movie clip and that's the only three items on stage that are connected to the action script and really matter the rest of this stuff is just for reference for people who see the demo on the page of develop php and i'm going to have these source files uh... available free you can download the whole source uh... package and also reference the code on the page of develop php in the flash section there Okay, so now let's explain the code that ties everything together and makes this possible. So if you have no desire to know, to want to know how to make uh, your file programmatically go to next and previous frame labels, then this lesson would not be for you. You should just move along and go learn something you want to learn how to do. But more, some advanced people might be at the, at the point to where they need to know how to do this, so I wanted to lay it out. Now inside the code, we connect to these three objects. So let's look at the instance name. That has an instance name of pages, and that's the item with the timeline that we want to control. And here is a next button. It has a pre a, a instance name of next btn, and the previous button has an instance name of prev btn. Now let's look at the code. Okay, so the first thing I did is I added event listeners for those two buttons on top so we can go from next to previous frames and we add event listeners so that way we can run a function when that event fires off and what it is is a click event so when the person clicks we fire off this function when they click this button we fire off this function so let's talk about the first function that gets fired off which is the go to next frame label function mm -hmm. So, uh, and this is the go to previous frame label function. So, inside of this function, when it fires off, we claim a variable. This variable is the string, which is the frame label that we're currently on. So, if we're inside of this page's movie clip, say we're on section three, that variable is going to be, it's going to say SCT3. So, we take that that variable that we get to string variable and then we create a string out of it that is just the number we take the SCT off and I cut it right out by using the replace method here so you can just take the SCT letters right off and you're left with a number so that would be um, the number that we're left with would say be 3 for instance so say we're left with the number 3 then we take that number and we convert it into an actual number because it's a string here so t in order to do mathematical equations on it it has to be an actual number so we convert that string variable into a number so say that number three if it happens to be a three would be converted to an actual number three in this line and then we can run mathematical equations on it now in this next section function we have an if conditional you can see that's not present in the previous section function because it's not needed and I'll tell you why in a second it is needed in the next section function 
because if we didn't have it it would snap back to frame one and if you wanted that kind of functionality you can just remove this conditional and just run these two lines default all the time but what I did since we only have five sections see there's only five sections so in the code we don't want it to go past section five so I say if the current number that we attained here happens to be less than five then we can go to next frame label if it's uh, if this condition is not met then it won't run these two lines and that's exactly what we want let me show you if I go all the way and get to page five it doesn't go back to page one or try to go to page six or anything crazy like that but if you wanted to go back to frame one or uh, page one frame label one then you would uh, just run these two lines by default every time and it would it would loop and uh, so I put this function in so it doesn't loop and inside or I put this conditional in so it doesn't loop and inside of that conditional we say we get that uh, current number that we attained here and we add one to it and we store that in a variable number named next num then we can just say pages which is our pages movie clip dot go to and stop or go to and play section whatever it needs to be so if that was a three that we attained here this would be made into a four right there and then this would say pages dot go to and stop section four and that's how it works and it's back into a string here or it's seen as a string and it goes to that frame label so that takes care of that next next section function right there it's all done right here so in the previous section function when that fires off anytime we need it to or when the user presses the previous section button or the previous frame label they want to get to the previous frame label or we want to take them to the previous frame label we run this code here and there's no conditional here because you can see by default when we go to say we're on section five we go all the way back to section one by default it doesn't loop it just stops on one because that's as far back as it can go so what we do is we do the same logic through these lines here with the only difference is we say current number instead of current number plus one we say current number minus one that'll take us to the previous frame label and that's pretty much the only difference between these five lines and these one two three four five those five or oh, exactly the same except for this uh, plus and minus differentiating them and then uh, the previous num that has a different name than the next num variable here but pretty much they do the same exact thing one goes backwards one goes forwards and that's how it works and uh... i've never seen this ex this method laid out kinda like it is i've never seen it I u i've seen people using the the uh... the next frame method by adding some action script so they can they, i think they use an array and then iterate through the array to go to the frame labels but I think this method is a lot easier actually a whole lot easier okay so if you want to use it there you go I know a lot of people wouldn't even need to understand how to do this until they get really deep into action script programming and making custom applications okay I'll have all of these source files available like I said at the page of develop PHP uh, in the flash section and uh, we'll see you guys next lesson